Hello, guys. Good evening to everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, good evening. And uh, congratulations to all the November batch students, those who have cleared their examination. Okay. So, Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Thank so you, sir. Really, yeah, yeah. It's really Thank your you, hard sir. work. Yeah. Hmm. Help you to clear this examination. Okay. And uh, always light expertise support will be with you. Okay. So not just with clearing this CAPS examination, but even for the further process for, until you become a fully licensed pharmacist. Okay. So my support will be with you. And also, as I mentioned in the group that in next month, that is in Jan, I'm going to conduct a workshop for all our students, for elite expertise students. And this workshop is mainly for, it is mainly for uh, how to face the interviews uh, for internship positions, as well as even after the, after internship, what are the other options that are available and how to prepare your resume for uh, internship and so on. So everything that I will conduct uh, one day full workshop, okay? And soon I will declare the date, okay? And I will uh, post in the group, okay? And if there is anything which is related to uh, any issues like in the, uh, for, for for the process, like in finding the internships as well as even while doing the internship, if you have any uh, issues, then always uh, you can contact me, okay? And I will, uh, depending on my availability, I will just keep on uh, giving the response to you guys, okay? So now at first I will discuss about uh, what are the next steps that you need to do, especially those who are already here in Australia. It means that you already have your um, valid work visa to uh, work here. It means that you can start your internship, okay? So for you, in order to start your internship, at first what you need to do is, uh, you need to register with APRA. So this is the first step to be done, okay? So in order to register with APRA, what you need to do is at first need to go through uh, APRA website, okay? So go to APRA website and, yeah, go to APRA website. And after one, once you go to the APRA website, choose a national board. So on the top, you can find uh, this option that is choose a national board. Just you need to click this option there. Okay. Then it will show all the boards which are and which comes under APRA. So APRA is nothing but it is one of the common bodies under which all the healthcare professionals gets registered, like all the doctors, nurses, dentists, pharmacists, physiotherapists. Okay? So everyone will be registered under APRA. So after you choose a national board, here you can clearly see pharmacy board. Okay, so just you need to uh, go to the pharmacy board. Okay, so when you click the pharmacy board, then it will navigate to APRA pharmacy board. Okay, so here you can clearly see clearly see that now you have uh, navigated to uh, APRA pharmacy board. Okay, so here when you enter here, so you can see that want to register as a pharmacist, how to apply. Okay. So just you can click this option here. Just need to click how to apply. Then again, it will bring up this page. Okay. So when you uh, go through this page, you can clearly see here for overseas practitioners registration. Okay. So here there will be a link for overseas practitioners registration. As you all come under the overseas practitioners pathway, that is as you have cleared the CAPS examination okay, and want to register as a uh, intern pharmacist here in Australia. So you all come under the overseas practitioners registration pathway. So just need to click this link. Okay, when you click this link, it will uh, bring up you to this page, okay? So in this page, when you scroll down, you will uh, see here the knowledge stream. Knowledge stream is, not, is nothing but the CAPS pathway, okay? So CAPS pathway, there, will, there is also another pathway that is the COOP pathway, which is not, uh, which, which is not, uh, uh, with, like it is not necessary for you. It is only for those who are already practicing in UK or US or Canada and uh, those who are migrating here to Australia, they need to go with the COP pathway, okay? So, but uh, you guys need to select this pathway, okay? And here, when you go to the knowledge stream and here you can see a link for internships web page, okay? So just need to click this internships uh, web page, then it will bring up to the internships page here, okay? So here in the internships page, it clearly shows that how many hours that you need to uh, do your internship. So now the internship hours are reduced to 1,575. Initially it was 1,800, 
24 hours. Uh, but uh, post COVID, they have reduced the intern hours to 1,575 hours. Okay. So here, when you scroll down, it will show you uh, this page that is application for provisional registration and approval of supervised practice. Okay. So here, there will be two applications. One is for provisional registration, application for provisional registration, and another application is for the approval of supervised practice. Okay, So I will explain you in detail about uh, what is the difference between these two applications. So here at the bottom, you can see that there are links to two PDF applications. So one is the AASP. AASP stands for the application for supervised practice, AASP 60. Okay, And here, when you click this uh, PDF link, then it will open the PDF over there. And also there is another application, application for provisional registration and supervised practice that is APRO, A-P-R-O 60. Okay. So what you guys need to do is at first you need to click this APRO 60. Okay. So this is the application which is required for you, which is APRO 60. Okay. So just you need to click this application. Um, and when you click this application, when you click this link, it will open a PDF. Okay. So this is the PDF and here it clearly says that application for provisional registration and supervised practice. Okay, so this is the APRO 60 form, APRO 60 form. Okay. So here, when you uh, look at this form, here it clearly says that overseas qualified pharmacist from countries other than New Zealand who have passed Australian pharmacy knowledge assessment of pharmaceutical sciences examination, that is the CAPS examination. Okay, So it means that this application is for all the overseas pharmacists, those who have cleared their CAPS examination. Okay, So you need to download this application and uh, you can print out uh, this application. And in this application, there will be different sections. Okay, So you need to fill uh, all the essential uh, sections. Okay, And like, for example, so this is the part where you need to, uh, after filling, like in the initial sections, you need to fill all your uh, name, your details, and so on. Okay, And when once you come to this page, that is what documents to be attached or what documents are the uh, ident proof of identity documents to be submitted. Okay, So when you come to this page, so here there will be different options which are available, like um, Australian visa and uh, international passport with Australian visa, okay, and uh, Australian any Australian um, ID card, okay, uh, or Australian driver's license. So all these things are not applicable for those who are already in India and those who haven't got the uh, permanent residency, okay. So for them, all these uh, things are not applicable. But those who are already here in Australia, okay, and if you already have uh, either the bank account or if you have the driver's license okay and uh, you definitely you will be having your visa okay so what you need to do is you need to fill all these details so you need to uh, submit at least one document in each category so here it says the category a b and c okay so you need to submit one document from each category okay so one document uh, from category a so category a consists of australian passport which is not applicable for you or Australian citizenship certificate, which is also not applicable for you, and immigration card or IMI card, which is also not applicable for you. But Australian visa, that is the foreign passport, must be selected as evidence for category B. That is, you will be having the Australian visa, so you can go with this category A. Okay, and even even uh, if you are in overseas right now, uh, sorry guys, please you need to turn off your microphone. If you have any questions, then you need to turn it on only at the end. Okay, make sure your mic microphones are turned off. And even uh, like those who are already here in Australia, you guys can fill all these details. Okay, and after filling these details, just you when you go to uh, the end page that is at the last page so you will find the options to enter your credit card details and make the payment okay so when once you fill your credit card details and uh, and when you sign on that uh, form on the application form okay what you need to do is you need to uh, post it to one of the australia uh, apra centers in australia okay so wherever it is, if you, what, whatever be the nearest uh, center and in whatever be the state that you want to get registered, like if you want to get registered in Victoria, post it to Melbourne. 
if you want to get registered in uh, South Australia, post it in Adelaide APRA Center. So whatever be the center, nearby center, you can uh, send this application form to them. Okay. So now what happens is then once you send this application form, then uh, one of the case officers will go through your application okay, and they will assess your application. And later on, they will, uh, in case if further documents are required, then they will keep on asking you to provide the further documents. So here the main document that they will ask you to provide is one is the um, police clearance certificate. Okay, so that's the most important one. So if you are already here in Australia, then they will ask you to submit the federal police check. Okay, so federal police check. And also they will, they will ask you to submit like in the last uh, 10 years, like wherever be the countries that you have uh, stayed. Okay, like if you were in India or if you have been in Middle East or any other countries. Okay, so you also need to send the clearance certificate from them. Okay, from those countries. So you need to organize the police uh, clearance certificate from those countries as well. Okay, and at the end, like the case officer will also ask you to submit the good standing certificate from your home country. Like there is the country where you have got registered. Okay. So for that, what you need to do is you need to uh, liaise with your uh, pharmacy council in your state, okay, wherever you got registered and ask them to send it to APRA. And nowadays, APRA is accepting it through email. Okay? So it means that they need not to post it, the document directly, they can send it to uh, APRA email, okay, to APRA office. And like the case officer will let you know what to which email that uh, you need to uh, send that uh, good standing certificate. Then you guys, what you need to do is just you need to call your pharmacy council and ask them to send it to that email ID and make sure that when they send it to uh, APRA, ask them to CC the document to you as well, because most of the times the APRA officers, they might not, even, even if your pharmacy council might have sent it, the APRA officers, they might ignore that email and uh, there will be a few hundreds of the emails that they receive every day. So uh, then your email, like what will be the uh, good standing certificate that they have sent, so they can't find it and they keep on asking you to organize the good standing certificate. Okay? So that's why better ask your pharmacy council when they send an email to APRA, okay, ask them to CC you okay, so that you will have a proof that, okay, on uh, 17th of December, uh, that my pharmacy council has sent an email to APRA. And also you will know the time, at what time uh, the email has been reached up over there. Okay, So it becomes much easier for you to track it. Okay. So these are the things that you guys need to do, like those who are already here in Australia and the other uh, application. So this application is the second application that is application for approval of supervised practice. So here there are two applications. The first one that we, whatever we have seen is just to get registered as an uh, intern pharmacist, that is the provisional registration. Okay. But this second application is application for supervised practice. So without this application or without the supervised practice uh, form, okay, you can't start your internship. Okay. So like what happens here is most of the times, like you, you will be, you guys will be finding uh, some internship. Okay. You will be uh, finding the internship in one of the pharmacies. Okay. But uh, that pharmacy, it takes some time to organize the intern position for you, internship position for you. So meanwhile, at first, what you need to do is so at first you need to get your provisional uh, license. That is the earlier application that whatever I have seen, I have shown you, okay? So this APRO 60 should be sent, okay? And with this APRO 60, what they will do is they will give you a conditional provisional license, okay? So conditional provisional license in the sense, so you are, uh, you, you are like you will get registered as a, a provisional provisionally registered pharmacist, Okay. But the condition is that you need to submit your supervised practice approval form. Okay. So on the day when APRA officer receives this supervised practice approval form, from that date, your intern hours will get calculated. That is, when once they receive this form, then they will send you an email that your uh, supervised uh, practice approval form has been approved. Okay. And your intern hours will get calculated from today. Okay. Until then, even if you start working up over there in any one of the pharmacies, so your intern hours won't get calculated unless you receive an official email from the case officer 
that you, uh, saying that your supervised practice up, uh, hours will get calculated from today. Okay, so this is the form. You need to fill the form, and at the end, your preceptor, that is nothing but the supervised, uh, uh, the supervisor or the pharmacist under whom you do your internship. Okay, so your preceptor should have to sign, and you have to sign both together. You need to sign, and this application should be sent to APRA. Okay, so far, like, and this is the another question like, when should you send your good standing certificate from your? pharmacy council that is from your home country okay so from your home country you can send this good standing certificate only when once you fill this apro 60 okay and you send this apro 60 to apra okay and when once the case officer is assigned then only you need to send your good standing certificate to apra okay so otherwise at the beginning itself at the initial it's stage itself, if you send the good standing certificate, then uh, the case officer, they won't accept that certificate. So it should be sent only when once the case officer asks you to send it. Okay. So for that, what you need to do is at first, uh, you need to liaise with your uh, pharmacy council in your state, like in your home country, like if you are from India, and if you are from Bangalore, okay, so just you need to liaise with the pharmacy council of Karnataka, okay, and uh, ask them to organize this certificate. Okay. and tell them to send this certificate when you ask them to do so okay don't ask them to send it immediately so ask them to organize make it ready okay and whenever you uh, tell them to uh, send that certificate through email to apra officer then they they will email it to the apra officer okay so that is the step and there is another uh, process which is involved while doing the internship, that is, you need to do an intern training program. Okay, so this intern training program is mandatory for everyone. All the uh, pharmacists they need to do this intern training program. Those who have studied here in Australia, uh, even if they have studied here in Australia, in Australian in universities, still they need to do this intern training program. So it is a one-year uh, program, and there are different. Uh, organizations and different uh, universities they also provide this intern training program and uh, like the two most famous one uh, which provides the intern training program for uh, community pharmacist is one is the guild pharmacy guild of australia and the other one is the um, apc that is the australian pharmacy council so these two uh, they provide the intern training program okay and also uh, sorry not the apc it is the psa pharmaceutical society of australia Okay, PSA and uh, Guild. So they both provide the intern training programs. And apart from that, SHPA, it also provides the intern training program for hospital pharmacists. So you can enroll in any of the intern training program. It depends, it completely depends on your choice. Okay, so whichever the program is suits better for you, and you can also see the fee of the intern training program that they are offering. So whichever is the best one that you can enroll in that intern training program, and it is a one year course. So all the interns must clear this intern training program, okay? And I made a special video for this intern training program, uh, and the video name is Australian Pharmacist Exam Fees and Procedures. So if you want to know more about it, so once you can go and watch this video, okay? So where I have clearly explained about what is the fees for the further upcoming exams, okay? Like for the intern return examination, as well as for the oral examination, and how much fees will be for the intern training program, okay? and what are the different uh, bodies which are providing this intern training program. So everything is explained in this video. So once you can uh, watch this video, guys, okay? Then. The next one is English language requirement for APRA. So APRA, in order to get registered as a provisional pharmacist with APRA, so you must have the English language uh, requirement, like you must clear the English language test. So either you can do the IELTS or you can do the PT or you can do the occupational English test. So APRA will accept all the uh, types of the English language tests like IELTS, PT, and OET. So the minimum requirement is seven bands in each component. Okay? Like in listening, speaking, reading, and writing, in four modules, you need to get seven bands or equivalent to 65 
in PTE. 65 in listening, reading, write, writing, and speaking. In all the components, you need to get 65. Or it is band or the grade B in occupational English test. Okay. And APRA will accept the scores in two sittings. Okay. Even if you if you can't get uh, like seven bands in uh, listening, reading, speaking, and writing in one sitting. So you, if you can do it in two sittings, but provided that it should be within six months. Okay. So if it is within six months, and if you uh, if you repeat the test, and overall your band score is seven, and with seven in each module, okay, then APRA will accept that English score. Okay, so this is the English language requirement to get registered with APRA. So if you don't have this English language requirement, or if you don't have the seven bands in IELTS or 65 in PTE, okay, uh, or if your English language is not valid, the test is not valid, it means that you need to retake your English language test. Okay, so either PTE or IELTS or OET, whatever uh, it suits to you, so you can go with those things. But always I recommend to go with the PTE because uh, scoring in PTE is much easier when compared to IELTS, okay? And um, even with OET, occupational English test as well. So scoring in PTE is much easier and PTE is much cheaper. The exam fee is also much uh, less when compared to IELTS as well as with the OET, okay? And the other advantage is PTE score you can get immediately. Like we, sometimes you will get within 24 hours or sometimes it may take up to uh, 48 or 72 hours, but it is much faster to get the PTE uh, results score as well. Okay, So always I recommend uh, everyone to go with the PTE because it is the, like getting 65 is much easier in PTE. And also those who are trying to get eight bands in IELTS, okay? eight bands in the sense like if you get only seven bands in IELTS with seven in each component, then you can claim only 10 points for your immigration. But if you get eight bands in IELTS with eight in each component, then you can score up to 20 in uh, immigration, okay? So even for scoring eight bands in IELTS, like scoring eight bands in IELTS is highly difficult, okay? So like score, getting the score of uh, eight in listening, reading, speaking, and writing is uh, highly difficult. But if you go with the PTE, okay? So you need to score 79 plus 79, in PTE is equal to eight bands in IELTS. Okay? So getting 79 in PTE is much easier. Okay? Like I can say that those who have got up to seven bands in IELTS, they can easily score 79 plus in PTE. Okay? So getting uh, 79 plus in PTE is much easier. So uh, try for PTE. And in case if you guys, uh, if you want to prepare for the PTE, there are some uh, best resources that I can uh, tell you. One is the uh, JS uh, uh, YouTube channel. It is the best uh, person to uh, learn the PTE. Okay, so he explains everything in in a uh, super uh, way. So I, I um, like by the time when I cleared my PTE, I just followed uh, his uh, like uh, his channel name is E2 PTE Academy. So I just uh, followed all his uh, YouTube uh, videos and then I have prepared by myself. Okay, so this is the best one. And also there are some uh, additional books that which are available like Macmillan's PT Academic uh, Test Builder. So which is the best one. Uh, if you go through all the Macmillan's test, then you, are, you, you will come to know that um, you, will, you will learn much better about this PT. And also there is another one that is PT Academic 79 plus. Okay? So all these books, they, give, uh, they provide the complete tips how to score 79 uh, plus in PT. Okay? And the other thing for this PTE is like directly straight away, you can uh, do some mocks from the official PTE website, which are available from the official PTE website. So you can buy those mocks from there. Each mock will be will cost only around $30 or $40. There will be a package, okay? Like you can buy uh, all together like four or five or six mocks, okay? And you can practice. Like what will be the mocks that uh, you practice? So all those mocks, they are simulated towards like to the main PT examination, okay? So it gives a very good practice for you, okay? So these are the best things that you can uh, follow. And later on, uh, we will also conduct a, another session like those who are struggling to get a score in the PTE. So we will use some tips how to improve your score, okay? So for that, uh, I will organize another session. So myself and Rekha, we both will be there. Okay? So we both will give you some tips Okay, especially for those who are struggling to 
score uh, high in PTE. Okay, so we both will provide um, tips for you guys. If you have any questions regarding APRA registration process, then uh, you can ask me. Okay, so you can uh, text me on WhatsApp, then I will reply for those things. Okay, so once again, thank you so much and have a good night.